I'm so excited to finally be doing some printmaking on this channel. Hi, Shanna Rowe Jackson here from Caution Arts at Play, and today I am finally going to be trying this block printing kit that I got from Blick a while back. If you've been watching me for a little while, you probably saw a studio vlog where I did a mini art haul in it, and this kit was part of that art haul. So I'm going to be using this kit, and I actually bought a couple other supplies that I might utilize as well, just because this kit didn't really come with the colors I wanted. I bought some extra linoleum and some extra inks. So let's take a look at this kit first and then I'll show you the extra inks I got. I'm super excited about this. And just for a little bit of a backstory, I have done some printmaking before in school. I took an Italio printmaking class and that's a little bit opposite of what I'm doing here. This is technically relief printing. Italio printmaking is when you etch into the plate and what gets printed is the lines that you've etched whereas this is the opposite what I'm etching is not gonna show up so whatever I leave left on my plate is what's gonna get printed and then the lines themselves probably won't show up oh my gosh this is a great kit go to brayer this is for carving this is my block and then we have another speedy carb block. And we have a bunch of ink. Let's take a look at this. <laughs> so I have not done this kind of printmaking probably since I was in like sixth grade. So I'm not as familiar with this. And even my art class that I took was back in 2017. So it's been a little bit since I've done some printmaking. Let's see, this is what it's gonna tell us. The kit includes cutters number one, two, three, and five, and knife number six. Lino handle, is that what this thing is? No, inking plate <laughs> and a bench hook. I have no idea what I'm doing. So this is gonna be fun, folks. I was just looking forward to carving into some stuff, but this kit has a lot of stuff that I will need I'm not going to go through every single thing. However, I will show you what's inside. I'm just not going to go through that whole pamphlet here. We have some silver ink. We have some red ink. And these do have a light fastness like rating, I guess you could say. It says excellent. It doesn't really tell us what that means. But obviously it means it's not supposed to fade, but you know what I mean. Ink extender. Oh, I wonder if this kind of thins it out. Slows ink drying time, maintains the viscosity, and ideal for low humidity conditions. I probably won't need that today because it's raining and overcast, but that's really cool that that came with that. A big thing of black, which is good, and gold. So it's kind of fun that it came with silver and gold. And then it has our inking plate, which is in here. I'll figure out how to use that in a little while. Sorry, I'm on a tilted table, as you can tell, because things are rolling around. And then let's take a look at these carving tools. So we can do different shapes and things like that. So I am really excited about doing this. Printmaking as a whole is a very, very old art form. It has been around at least since the 1400s. And I think it's just, it's just really neat to be able to engage myself in an art form that has been around that long because it really is an important part of our visual history. And I'm gonna link some resources in the description below so you can learn more about it. There are many different types of printmaking. As I mentioned, I took an Italio printmaking class, which is gonna be the opposite of this. And actually, I can show you some of the stuff I did in that class to kind of give you an idea. I'll show you the plates because they're a little different than what we're doing here. So the main thing that we did was we actually had copper plates and this looks like crud now. This was a process. This was probably one of the most difficult classes I ever took because there were just so many steps and they actually use acid to etch into the plate. So you put something on here as a resist and then you sketch into that and then you dip it in acid and it 
cuts into the plate where the lines are that you've scraped out. And then that's what prints. And I'll show you the print, one of my favorite prints from that. I have it somewhere. Oh, maybe I don't have one of those with me. But I don't have one of those with me right now. But I will show you one that I did on a plate. It was similar to this plate. Same concept, same kind of thing. But you see the part that was etched the darkest are the parts that were the lines that were carved in. Whereas with this, the part that's going to show up the darkest is going to be the part that isn't those lines that are carved. The carved lines are going to be white or lighter than the rest of it. So that's the difference between relief printing and Italio printmaking, which is not the best way to define it. And that's why I've linked some things in the description below. But there's so many different ways that you can do things. Like this is considered like a dry point etch and you can't really tell. But there's a mermaid in there. And I did that along with some screen printing. So I did the dry point etch first and then I used screen printing to get the waves. So that was another assignment in class. So there's so many different ways to do printmaking. But yeah, so it was a really fun class. And... I really enjoyed myself, but it was also a really expensive class <laughs> and time consuming class. And the tools that I needed for Italio printmaking is not something I'm going to do from home. I'm not going to have acid. I'm not going to have a printing press in my studio. I don't have the room. I don't have the money. However, I have been wanting to do some more printmaking. It's been a very long time and I've had the urge to do it for a while now. And so I thought this kit would be the perfect way to do it from home. And so I'm going to try some relief printing and... I'm really looking forward to this. So let me show you the inks that I have that I bought separately. I didn't go all out. I just bought a few. I brought I bought Process Cyan, Process Magenta, and Yellow because these can work as sort of primaries for me so I can mix other colors out of these if I need to. So if I need green or if I need a purple or anything like that, I can mix from these. But I also bought a regular blue... And I already had the red from the kit, so I knew I could also mix primaries this way, depending on how vibrant I wanted my colors to be. And then I also bought white, so I have some good neutrals here, and then the silver and gold. And I think this will give me everything that I need. I also have some sketches that I did from my printmaking class before. I think that I'm going to use those as inspiration instead of sketching something new, because there's a few I wasn't able to get to in my class and these are some of the sketches I want to I kind of want to do this one I'm going to scan them into the computer and then print them out and transfer them this one's kind of fun you can see this was back from 2017 that I did these sketches these ones are square so I don't think I'll do those and I'm really interested in this one so I'm going to try to do one or two today and see where that gets me but yeah, so I'm very excited about this kit. I have to read up more. I'm going to switch to time lapse and voiceover probably because this is going to be um, me learning a new process. <laughs> and I've already done a long enough intro. So check out the links in the description to learn more about printmaking and all the different types there are out there. There's many more than what I mentioned here. And just do like a little history lesson on it because it's a really, really interesting art form. And like I said, it's a big part of our visual history. You can learn a lot about events from back in the day by looking at art. I think we all are well aware of that. And printmaking was one of those kinds of art forms that has a lot of history involved. So, all right, so I'm gonna get to work. Oh, one thing I forgot is an artist print came with this, with this kit. Mindy Schumacher? I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce the name, but look how beautiful this is. I'm really excited. Also, I bought some printmaking paper. It's the Strathmore 400 series printmaking paper. And that's what I'm going to be using for this. And I cut out a few pieces. So funny because I cut it the same size without even knowing that that's the size that she used. So and it looks like similar paper. So that's good. I'm on the right track. All right. I'm very excited. I will get to work as I said. 
Okay, so starting with my first project, this is a picture of my husband and my dog, Max. And what I did was I scanned in my initial sketch and then I printed it out so that it was around about the same size as the block and I made up for the spot that was a little bit smaller. And I used some um, graphite on the back side and transferred it. So one thing that I want to note, when I scanned in my initial sketch, once it was in the computer, I flipped it because it's actually a mirror image. So if I had just transferred it the way it was, when I flipped the paper to like actually print it, it would have ended up reverse of what I wanted it. So to keep it in the same format in which I drew it in, I had to flip it before printing it. So that way there, it would be a mirror image and then come out the way I wanted it to when it printed. That's like really, really hard to explain <laughs> in a way that's not confusing. But anyways, I transferred it with some graphite and now I'm going over it with a pit pen to darken my lines to make it more easy for me to see when I'm carving. And I did not film a lot of me carving this block because it was a wench to carve. This one was really difficult to carve for me, especially since I'm pretty inexperienced. And I actually was using my right hand for most of this because I find that even though I'm a lefty, I'm much better with like painting knives and carving and things like that with my right hand. I don't know. It's very strange. I think that's because that's, <clears throat> as a pharmacy tech, that's how I've had to count medication before with a counting tray and... I don't know. I'm a, I'm a lefty in a right-handed world, so that has something to do with it. But you'll actually see me go back and forth on the next block that I carve between my left hand and my right hand just for different angles because I'm actually just as good with my right hand like as I would be with my left. So with this block, I ended up doing mostly with my right hand because I needed my left hand to stabilize. I don't know. It was very strange. It was very difficult. I should have started with the other block. And the other block was a breeze. And here I am transferring the outline for the other block. And I decided to go with the lily because I wanted something more summery than the acorn one that I was looking at. I'll save that for fall time. And here you can see this was much easier for me to carve. And I really like this block in particular. I want to order more. This was so much easier. I mean, it's in the name. It's meant to be easier. It's definitely a quick carve, and it was so satisfying, so much more satisfying to do than the other one. Like, I had hand cramps after the other one. But again, I did the mirror image thing, so I scanned it in, I flipped it, and then when I printed it, it and transferred it, it was reversed. But then once I, you'll see, once I actually ink it and then lay the paper down, and then I pull the paper back up, it flips back over, and it's exactly the format that I wanted it to be in. So just keep that in mind, mirror image, if you are ever going to do printmaking. And I learned that in my printmaking class anyway. I mean, some things it really doesn't matter. Like this lily, it, it was fine. Like, it didn't necessarily matter. I just wanted to keep in the habit of it. Like, I could have had it flipped. I could have just left it and not cared which way it was going, but I'm sure with certain subjects, you'll want it to be the format that you sketch it out in. Otherwise, it might look wonky when it's flipped. So just keep that in mind. And this one, I, was, I used a bunch of different knife sizes or carving blade sizes. I don't really know the proper terminology. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Like this, I'm still very new to this. This is, I don't know all the terminology. And I apologize to anybody who's actually a printmaker out there. Speaking of that, there are other people who have done printmaking on YouTube. I'm sure that if you look up printmaking, you'll find plenty of people. I'm sure there's some professional printmakers out there. I know that one of the other YouTubers that I follow has done a little bit of printmaking on her channel, Mira Byler. I'll link her in the description below. She also just has kind of played around with it. I don't I think she just, you know, does it for fun like I am. And so she's come up with some pretty cool stuff when she's done it. So I will link her in the description below if you want to see some more videos of another artist doing this medium. And so I was being very mindful of what I wanted to keep white. So you'll see these big chunks that I'm taking out now. I wanted to keep that white because those were highlighted parts of the petals and they kind of had like that outer ridge of the petals and like the inner workings of the flower. I wanted those to be white and so I kept that in mind while carving. So now I'm inking my first block 
and you see I'm putting my paper upside down on there. And then when I pull it, you see how the image was flipped compared to the way the the block is. And so that's why you keep that in mind and flip it before you print it. So that way there you can have it be the format that you sketched it in. Because this is the format I sketched it in, whereas the block is kind of is the flipped version of it. And this part's going pretty fast, but I will have one that's slowed down so you can kind of see a better reveal. And at the end, I'll show you my favorites because a lot of these didn't come out great. <laughs> I didn't expect them to. However, I had so much fun. It was like just so much fun. And of course, that big black plate that was to put the ink on so I could roll it out. I mean, I don't know why that wasn't as obvious to me when I was opening the kit. And this isn't really a review of that kit because I'm not experienced enough in this medium to know if that kit was good. I can say I did have a lot of fun with it. The only thing that I wish that it would have had was a Baron. I didn't have that and that's the thing to smooth out the paper. See, here's a, a slower motion version and you can see how it's flipped compared to my block. It's going in the opposite direction. I cleaned my, my inking plate thing <laughs> and decided to use some black and gold and I really really loved this combination so I didn't have a baron which is the thing that you use to smooth out the paper I'm actually using a bottle of Liquitex basics titanium white like I'm using a, a tub of paint to smooth it out because I didn't have that. I did end up ordering one later on off of Amazon, but that's the only thing I think that the kit was missing was something to smooth the paper out with so that you could get a smooth print. And I really, really loved this combination of the black and gold. I liked it a little bit better than the colorful version I did before. And of course, at this point, I started getting a little bit better. I started getting in the groove. And I have my block taped down to my cutting pad because it has measurements. And so I can kind of place the paper more evenly, although there were still times that it didn't come out as even as I wanted. But it kind of helped me measure the paper compared to where the block was and place it so that way there I'd have a good even border. And I got a little bit better at that as I went along as well. But there's one that I really, really like, but I end up like the border wasn't even, but I love the way it printed. So I was able to cut the border a little bit to make it more even. And I'm not doing any additions here. Like I'm not necessarily going to sell any of these. This is me practicing and just having fun. So the ones here I'm, I'm keeping, I might post, there's a couple of the Lily ones I might post on my website for sale, but, and I may scan them in and offer them as prints, but I don't know. This one of my dog and my husband, I have no reason to sell. Like nobody needs a picture of my husband <laughs> other than maybe his mother. And I wouldn't sell it to her anyways. I would just give her a copy or whatever, but so that one didn't come out as even as I would have liked, but I was really liking the way the gold and the black looked, and that was a greeting card. So I had, at this point, switched to some of the Strathmore um, watercolor greeting cards that I have, and I did a couple prints on that. So I went between my Strathmore printmaking paper and my, my greeting cards, and they came out really cool. So now I'm on to the Lily. This was so much fun. I was so excited with the way the lily came out. And I had used this same sketch for that plate that I showed you in the beginning when I did my Intaglio printmaking class. And then this one, I used multiple colors in it. And this is where I really started like getting excited. Like I love the way that came out. That's so cool. And then later on, I even ended up putting more detail within the flower as well with other colors. So I'm not just rolling stuff, but I also pulled out some pink brushes and painted in some detail. And you see that there. And I really like the ink. I think it's vibrant and beautiful and I really enjoyed the paper. I think the paper was great and it took the ink really well at least in my limited experience. And here is the stuff. And I will show you my favorite. My whole studio was a mess, as you can tell. But boy, was it worth it. What a great way to spend the weekend. Okay, so this was so much fun. I love, I even love my little blocks. I love the way this one looks. But boy, was it a toughie to carve. Like, whereas this is like one big floppy 
pencil erasers that that's what makes me think of this was so much easier but I do love the way this looks just in and of itself I just think it's actually really cool looking but so let's look at my favorites from this print run <laughs> um I had a hard time getting a very good one with a colorful look of my dog and my husband but here are a couple of them that I think are okay. I mean, obviously, I'm not a fan of this marking, but they were they were all right. This one is definitely uneven on the paper, and there's a lot of ink here. So I definitely have to get used to the amount of ink that I'm rolling on there and gain some control there. But these are some of the okay colorful ones. I still think they're really neat. I think this one might be my favorite, even though there's a lot of marks in this one. His nose looks so red. But to me, the star of the show was this one. And I even signed it and named it Life is Golden. At this point, this is when I was using the black and the gold ink. And it had mixed together really well at this point. And it's so, it's shimmery, but it kind of a dark gold and I love the way it printed. I think it came out awesome. This might be my favorite print of the whole shebang, of this whole video. Okay, and oh yeah, here's one that kind of is like less even. So I definitely had some duds from the gold run too. Like this one I tried to re-ink and I definitely put it in the wrong spot. <laughs> and that's also one of the cards, but yeah. So let's look at the lily ones. I was really, really happy with the lily ones, like right out of the gate. This one's a card. It's a little lower than I meant for it to be, but at the same time, I could write at the top of that, like say happy birthday or something. So it ended up working out because it's a card. And I was so excited. I think that might've been the first one I did. And then it's like a little uneven over here because I think I squished a little too hard on the edge since this is pretty flexible. But overall, I'm really, really happy. And even though it's kind of like a monotone one. But that color is so much fun. And something I didn't realize, when I bought the white, it's platinum white. So it's actually sparkly. Like it's got, it's pearlescent. And so when the white mixed with the magenta... It made it pearlescent and that was like really exciting too. I don't know if you can see it there. But then I started doing the multicolor and oh my gosh, that was so much fun. I really love the way these came out. And I think the two stars of the show for the lily are these two where I started adding the orange. And none of them are perfect, but I am really happy with them. And you can kind of see that glistening in the pink there from the white. And it just adds a little bit of different dimension. So yeah, those are my favorites from this batch. If you'd like to see me do more of this on my channel, let me know. I'm sure I'll get better with time and be able to give some more tips on how to do it. I also... Like I said, I kind of want to do that acorn one at some point. So maybe I'll do a fall themed video with printmaking because I'm sure I'll have more than one fall themed video coming up this fall since that's my favorite season. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed watching me play around with this medium. And if you'd like to see me do more, just let me know in the comments below. And yeah, I will see you next week. Bye. Just so y'all know, I offer a different form of prints. I actually have a print site where I offer merch and prints of my artwork. So if that's something you're interested in, please look at the link in the description below. And yeah, I would greatly appreciate your support. Thank you.